Hello, my name is Mike Gag, and welcome to my video on Drag and Drop Basics, which is a part of my series on Windows programming with the C-Sharp language. Now, if you have used computers at some point within the last 10 years, you are probably familiar with Drag and Drop. Drag and Drop is simply where you click the mouse on some data, and then you move the mouse and let go of the mouse, and the data moves to where you let go of the mouse button. So you can drag and drop between programs, between fields. Uh, a lot of times when you want to upload things, they just provide a space that you drag and drop into that space. And it uploads uh, whatever files and whatnot. So dragging and dropping is very prolific. It's, it, it exists in many different applications. It's a very powerful feature. And we're going to look at implementing our own dragging and dropping here inside our Windows programs. Now to utilize drag and drop, uh, which is uh, centric to the mouse, which is focused on the mouse, there are three event handlers we're going to use. And those event handlers are mouse down, mouse enter, and drag drop. All right. So most important to remember is there's three things we need to do when we're working with dragging and dropping. We need to begin the drag drop, we need to validate the data, and we need to resolve the drag drop. All right. If we have two controls, which I'll call control one and control two, control one is responsible for initializing the drag drop, and control two is responsible for validating and resolving the drag drop. No, drag drop. Okay. So just remember, there's three parts. Control one handles the first part. Control two handles the next two parts. If you remember that, then you're, you're pretty good to go. So let's let's take a look. What I want to do is I want to uh, have dragging and dropping between two text boxes. So I'm going to come over here to my toolbox and I'm going to add two text boxes. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to leave them named text box one and two so we get an idea of the order. All right. Before we can do any dragging and dropping, we have to specifically say, hey, you can drag and drop to this form or to this control. So I'm going to click text box two, and I'm going to come over here to the properties, and I'm going to look for allow drop. By default, it's false. So we are going to set it to true. We do this right away because after we write the code, if we forget, we'll run it and it won't work. So we're just going to do this right off the bat. So allow drop equals true. Great. We're good to go. Now, like I said, there's three events, all right, and three things we need to do. And the first is to initialize the drag drop with the mouse down event. So I'm going to click on uh, text box one here, and I'm going to click the lightning bolt to get to my events, and I'm going to look for mouse down. What that means is the user has clicked the mouse inside of this, this uh, control, all right? And what we're going to do is very simple. So inside the mouse down event, we are going to initialize the drag and drop. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to say text box one dot do drag drop. Okay, just like that. Text box one dot do drag drop. And what we are dragging and dropping is going to be text box one dot text. All right. So that's the data of this of this method. All right, it's the text of the text box, and then we need to specify what effects we're using. Drag drop effects, and so we're going to type drag drop up, drop effects dot copy. Now, there's a couple different ones in here, and mostly they just change the way the cursor looks when you're dragging and dropping. All right, so I'm going to say copy because that's what I want my cursor to look like. I could say all. All right, so then we'll let the other form decide what the effect is going to be, uh, or move, or whatever. But I'm going to say copy. All right, so here we go. Textbox one dot do drag drop, and we're passing in textbox one dot text and the drag drop effect copy. All right, so that is step one. We have initialized or initiated, I should say, the drag drop event. We are attempting to drag and drop. All right, so. That's the first part. Great. Control 1, like I said, is responsible only for the first part, initiating the drag and drop. Now, Control 2 is responsible for 1, validating the data, and 2, resolving the drag and drop. We're really going to kind of skirt the whole validating data. We're going to cover that in the next video. Um, we're going to talk about it a little bit, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in the next video. And with text box 2 selected, I want to look for... Drag enter. Drag enter means that the left, left mouse click is held down when the mouse enters this, this uh, text box. 
So I'll double click in here, and we see that we don't have the traditional mouse event args, we have drag event args. All right, uh, so these are uh, uh, event arguments consistent with a drag and drop uh, procedure. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say e dot effect. All right, that's what drag and drop effects that I want equals drag drop effects dot. Oh, I'm sorry, we're not going to do that. We're going to do e dot effect equals e dot allowed effect. All right, we're just basically we're keeping it real generic right now. We'll, we'll look at the other stuff later. But basically what we're saying is, hey, whichever effects I'm allowed to do, do it. I'm not doing any real validation here. I'm just saying, hey, they dragged into the text box. Do whatever you want. All right, we'll talk about validation later. Okay, but this is an important step. This just verifies that the drag and drop that was initiated is allowed. By saying e.effect, we're saying, hey, you can do this. All right, and we'll talk about validation where we might not necessarily allow that in the future. All right. So that covers initiating the drag and drop and validating the data, sort of. We'll talk more about that later. The third step, all right, is resolving the drag and drop. So I'm going to come back here to our, my form one, and I'm going to look for my text box two, all right? And in my event handlers, I'm going to look for drag drop. That means the mouse was being held down, and then the user let go of it, all right? So they dropped it. So I'll double click here. And what I'm going to see, uh, or what I'm going to want to type, is my resolution. In this case, I want to move the text. So I'm going to say textbox2 dot text equals, all right? Now this is a bit tricky. We pass data into these event args, and the data kind of gets encapsulated in a bunch of other stuff, so we need to extract that data back out, which can be a little tricky. And the way we want to do it, in this case, we're looking for text data. So we're going to say e.data dot get data and we're going to say hey we are looking for text so I'm going to type in data formats dot text so what this is going to do is it's going to go and get all right it's going to go and get any text data that's in this data all right and then finally I'm going to say dot to string to turn it into a string all right so it's going to say hey give me all of your text data inside data turn it into a string, put it in textbox2.text. I know that's a lot of steps, but that's effectively what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. And I'm going to move the box down here. And I'm going to say hello world. All right. And now I'm going to click and hold the left mouse. You'll see that I got this little no-no sign, meaning that I can't drag all over this forum. But I move it in here, and now it's saying, yes, you can. And I let go, and I see hello world. All right? So hello world gets added in there. I could also say textbox2.text plus equals whatever is being drugged there. And then if I were to say world here and hello space there, hello world. Okay? It won't overwrite everything that's in there. It will just add it on. Of course, I could keep dragging. You know, there's nothing to stop me from doing that. Uh, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's dragging and dropping. Now let's look a little bit at validation. Okay, I don't want to get real crazy into validation right now, but we are going to talk about it just a little bit. Now, right now, the user is allowed to drag anything they want into there. Okay, they could be trying to drag a picture. They could be trying to drag a database. They could be trying to drag whatever, and we're just allowing it, which can cause some, some very weird things to happen. For instance, let me run this. All right, now I have a second monitor here you can't see, but what I have is I grabbed a picture. So I've actually drag and dropped a picture from my, or dragged a picture from my Windows Explorer. It's what I have here. All right, it will allow me to drop a picture into this text box. When I let go, my program crashes. All right, object reference not set to an instance of an object. There was no text there. Okay, uh, it's saying, hey, this is this is not what I expected. All right, I expected text. You gave me a picture. Program is going to crash. So we are capable of testing the type of data that's here before allowing it. So I could say if e dot data Oops, e dot data dot get data present. 
data format dot text. So it's going to say, hey, is there text in here? If there is, allow it. Okay. If there is no text, all right, then e dot effect equals drag drop effects dot none. All right. So this is saying, hey, if we've got text, we're good. If we don't have text, no, do not allow it. And I'll run it again. And we'll see that I can type some text in here and we drag and drop just fine. But if I grab this image from off screen and let go, nothing happens. Our program doesn't crash anymore because when my mouse, at the moment my mouse enters the text box, it's right now, all right, it got validated and said, hey, that's not text. We're not allowing this drag drop, okay? Otherwise here, say, okay, yeah, you are validated, allow it, whatever. Okay, so that's one bit of data validation saying, hey, do we have what we want, all right? Another point of data validation is actually checking the data, all right? This is just a normal code block. We can do any amount of ifs and whiles and fors and, and whatever we want in here. Uh, we have control over the data. So let's say I only wanted to allow the string hello world, okay? So I could say if, if we have data and if that data is what we want, so e dot data dot get data data formats dot text dot to string equals hello world. So if it is text and the text is hello world, okay? It's very important we use the double ampersand instead of the single one on this. All right? I'll show you. I'll actually show you here. Uh, so let's run it. And I'll type, hello world, and I'll drag and I'll drop, so that works, all right? But if I typed, let's say, uh, uh, just junk, it doesn't let me drop it because the, that junk that I typed does not equal hello world, all right? And if I attempt to drag this image from off my off screen, it also doesn't work. Now, if I take one ampersand away, just have and, and I run it, we might have junk and junk doesn't work. If I type hello world, that does work. But now if I drag that image from off screen, look what happens. The second I enter, we crash. If you remember from part one, uh, might have been part two, I don't remember which, part one or part two, all right? The single ampersand is the and without short circuiting. Double ampersand is the and with short circuiting. We want a short circuit. If this proves false, we don't want to verify the second line. With the single ampersand, it says, okay, this is false, but let's test this one as well. And we know this one crashes the program because there's no text data to get. All right. So double ampersand makes this program work just fine. All right. I did not mean to click that. Okay. So that's going to conclude this video on dragging and dropping basics. In this video, we saw how to establish drag and drop, kind of a chain of command from one control to the next. We talked about the three parts of dragging and dropping. The first is initiating the drag drop. The second is validating. And the third is resolving the drag drop. And we looked at the three events required, the mouse down, the drag enter, and the drag drop event, which makes everything work. All right. So in the next video, we're going to look at more advanced ways of handling dragging and dropping.